it's not whether you are right or wrong that's important but how much money you make when you're right and how much you lose when you're wrong says george soros too many investors become obsessed with being right even when the gains are small winning big and cutting your losses when you're wrong are more important than being right hello and welcome in today's video i'm analyzing bel bharat electronics limited it's a defense public sector undertaking established in 1954 under ministry of defense it caters to the electronic equipment requirements of the defense sector government of india remains uh, the company's largest shareholder with the current shareholding at 55.27% bel is the dominant supplier of radar communications and electronic warfare equipment to the indian armed forces the company has nine manufacturing units located across india and two research units bangalore and gaizabad units are bel's two major units with bangalore unit contributing the largest share to the total revenue and profits let us look at the shareholding pattern as of september 2020 promoter that is government is holding around 51 percent domestic institutional investors are heavily invested in this company at 31.5 percent foreign investors are also there but they have reduced their stake although by from june 2020 quarter it has increased to 9.6 but overall it seems quite flat public is also not that much just 7.6 percent so i like to invest in companies in which public participation is not that high whereas dii and fii holding is high as well as promoter holding is high so this is a good company as of shareholding pattern is concerned let us look at the positives and negatives company's debt has reduced it is almost debt free and it pays a healthy dividend payout of almost 38.45 percent from its profits company's data days are very high at 189 days i generally don't like such high data days promoter holding has decreased by 16 percent over the last three years if you look at the movement of price over the last one year it has almost crossed its one year high currently it is quoting somewhere above 110 rupees and above both its 50 and 200 day moving averages although this is considered bullish i would not want to buy at highs or above moving averages i rely on rsi indicator to time my buying and selling entries or exits if you look at the price to earnings currently it is somewhere between 15 and 17 times and the median pe is somewhere around 19 so it's available below its average of the last five years so it's available at a decent price to earnings ratio company's revenues since 2006 as of on the chart has been constantly fluctuating every quarter it starts low and then goes up as the quarter ends either in the december or the march quarter so it's always, always been like this but the overall trend has been on the upwards towards revenue generation on a quarterly basis the opm and the npm margin is also quite decent over uh, 10 about 10 percent for the net profit margin but it keeps fluctuating and uh, as earlier we saw the data days were also very high and uh, when you check it in the balance sheet or the annual statement it does state that most of these payment are secured payment from the government of india so let us begin our core analysis basic ratios that we are going to analyze to understand if the fundamentals of bharat electronics is still intact and if we can hold on to this company the market cap currently is 28000 crores and if you see three years back it was 35000 so the market cap has definitely fallen uh, from where it was three years back and it is coming very near to its five years market cap or where it was five years back so currently basically if you're buying today you will get it at a price which was around five years back approximately current price is 115 and ab almost touching its 52 weeks highest point the lowest it had reached was 56 rupees and from there are from and from there on it has almost doubled 
stocks current price earning is 16.3 and uh, its book value is 41.6 so considering price to book also it is approximately around two and a half times and price earning wise also this is quite uh, cheap dividend yield is around 2.43 percent on a current price of 115 rupees that is whatever last dividend it paid based on the current price we can expect approximately 2.43 percent of dividend return on capital employed and roe both are very good above 15 percent which is a good value for this company face value is one so the current price would be approximately 1150 rupees if we equalize it to the face value of 10 to compare it with other companies price to cash is also good at 10.9 if you don't understand these ratios please check out the old videos or earlier videos that i have released which are one and a half hour long you will find the link in the description as well as you can check out the playlist uh, section of the english fundamental analysis return on equity five year growth rate is positive which is a very good sign so the company is generating higher returns as the overall net worth is also increasing by 3.95 percent earnings per share is seven rupee that is on the current price it is generating a profit of seven rupee every year that's a 16.3 time multiple that you are paying for this earning to buy this particular script book value three years back was 32.9 rupees per share which the company has now managed to increase to 41 so this is a good sign companies currently has 244 crores of equity shares outstanding in the market over the last five years the opm margin is also very good at about 20 percent return over last one year is approximately 13.6 percent only but if somebody had bought during this pandemic times they would have generated a huge return from this company but from last three years and five years it has not generated any return for the investors and therefore buying at the right time is so very important so time your entry correctly and that is based on rsi that i do debt is zero previous year it was 33 crores three years back it was 63 so the company is debt free it's paying a very nominal interest of just two crores if you see this this is the problematic thing here where the data day is three years back collection from the, its customers which is mostly government is 184 days and it has further increased to 189 days so this puts a pressure on its working capital requirement although working capital is positive because it's a debt free company so that's the only advantage that it has that it is not under pressure all the time even though the payment from government is not coming although it's coming delayed by almost 184 days investments is also very low when compared to the balance sheet size of 25,176 crores so it's a very small value it doesn't have any cash holding as of now we don't have the data of trade receivables we'll check it out in the peer group analysis why the data for all these three are not available even trade payables is showing zero but this needs to be checked out definitely there are trade receivables working capital is 6000 crores positive that is it has enough assets to pay off the liabilities the net block or the net assets three years back was 1500 and it has almost doubled so the company is investing in buying fixed assets over the years over the last three years the current debt to profit is zero that is the company is debt free market cap is just two times away from the revenue it is generating every year profits after tax for the last five years in total is 8000 against that the cash coming in is uh, slightly low at 5500 crores i would generally want uh, the cash from operations to be more than the profit after tax of the last five years out of this it has a free cash flow of 1872 here too i would want at least 50 percent of the cash earned over the last five years to be remain as free cash moving on let us look at the comparison of bharat electronics with honeywell auto the current market price for bharat electronics is 115 honeywell is trading at around 30000 rupees per share honeywell is down almost 21% from its 52 week highest point whereas 
Bharat Electronics is almost just away 2.9 percent away. Results are up to date till March 2020 annually and quarterly it is up to date till September 2020. If you look at the sales, the sales for Bharat Electronics has grown or has seen a growth rate of 16 percent whereas Honeywell has seen a degrowth from 827 crores in September 2020 to 759 in September 2019. In terms of net profit, Bharat Electronics again has seen a growth of around 15% in its profits whereas Honeywell has seen a 10% degrowth. If you look at the entire year's sale and compare it with the recent 12 months, 12,967 and 12,965. So there is no difference between the recent 12 months compared to March 2020. Same is with Honeywell Auto. Profit wise, uh, BEL's profits have dropped from 1,800 to 1,700 crores. Whereas Honeywell's profit has also fallen from 491 to 462 crores. Looking at the cash generated in March 2020, higher cash generated than the profit declared. But Honeywell has seen a lower cash than the profit declared of 491 crores. The latest price earning is 16 times for BEL. Honeywell is very expensive at 59 times and even its last 3 years average is around 53. So it's gone way above its average also. My here benchmark to buy into a company is 25 or near its averages. BEL last 3 years average is around 12 and 5 years is 21. So it's somewhere between its 3 and 5 years average. So this is a good valuation as of now. Even price to cash wise, BEL is at a very reasonable level of 10 times. Whereas Honeywell is 82 times. Why would you want to pay 82 times more than the cash it is generating? But we have to look at long term trend as well as short term. Price to book again for Honeywell is expensive at 11 times. So whatever the shares are worth as per the company, against that we are paying 11 times to buy into this company. I would not pay more than 2.5 times. For my companies i would want to buy at the most economical or at the lowest valuations as far as possible in good companies that is price to book is 2.7 expensive again gone above my benchmark this is where i plan to sell off whenever it goes above 2.5 and buy below 2.5 it is not necessary that i'll sell off above 2.5 i'll check out the rsi and then decide where i want to exit Profits for BEL has grown at the rate of 8.8% .8 over the last 5 years and 62 in the last 3 years. This is the compounded profit growth rate. Honeywell Auto has seen a very high growth rate in its profits from both 5 and 3 years back. So this needs to be investigated whenever you have a very high growth rate in profits or revenues that needs to be investigated separately. Revenue for BEL has grown at 12 and 14% whereas Honeywell is growing its sales at 6 and 10 percent. So these are good values but needs to be checked for Honeywell as far as 5 and 3 years growth rates are concerned. ROE BEL is somewhere around its 5 and 3 years average at around 18 or 19 percent. So this is a good value in terms of generating returns on shareholders money. Honeywell is generating around 20 to 22 percent over the last 5 and 3 years period. ROC wise, Honeywell is generating around 34 percent or 31 to 33 percent on the long term basis, whereas BL is also generating a good return of 24 to 26 percent over the long term. So, both of these companies are generating good returns on both the shareholders' money as well as capital employed into the business. Return on assets over the long term period of five years is 16 percent for, uh, for BL and 19 percent for Honeywell. So both of again a good uh, return on assets employed into the business. Asset turnover is decent at 1.2 and 1.4 very nearby to each other. Inventory turnover is very high for Honeywell. So this again needs to be investigated as to whether the inventory holding itself is so low or the sales is very high. So this needs to be investigated separately. Whereas BL's inventory holding or rather the sales is around 1.6 times higher than the inventory it is holding in its balance sheet. So with these ratios, I intend to understand what is happening in the company in terms of efficiency, profitability, return ratios, valuations and so on. 
and through this we can understand whether we want to or we can invest in this company or avoid it altogether or even if we are holding into a company we can decide if we want to exit based on these numbers the profits for the long term was around 8000 crores for bl and 1400 crores for honeywell very low profit for honeywell and compared to the cash as well bl is generating around 5500 less than the cash or uh, less than the profit shown in the uh, less than the profit shown in the pnl account whereas free cash flow also we saw 1800 crores so these numbers are not up to the mark as i would want them to be but this would definitely be like this because as we saw the data days were very high in this company honeywell is also generating lower cash than the profit declared as well as uh, the free cash flow is entirely there with them at around 1162 this shows that in the last five years there has not been that much growth in terms of purchase of assets on an average bl is generating around 1600 crores of profits every year honeywell compared to bl is very small at around 282 crores of profits market cap wise both companies are almost equal at around 27 and 28 thousand crores but net worth wise bl is huge at around 10000 whereas honeywell is just 2300 so this company honeywell has been given a huge premium by the investors in the market and then that needs to be understood what is the reason for that high valuations and if we are willing to pay that it is not necessary just because the market has given that valuation we also need to buy at such high premium or a high valuation we can always wait patiently for a drastic fall in this company if you are really interested in buying into it contingent liability for bl is 2200 which is uh, almost 20 percent which is my benchmark also should not exceed 20 percent of the net worth honeywell's contingent liability is reasonable at around five percent both the companies are almost debt free coverage again would be very high because there's no debt on the company's books promoter holding in honeywell is very high at 75 percent and that is why there's less supply of shares in the open market and therefore higher demand for these shares and therefore the book value would also go up promoter holding for bel is 51 none of these promoters have pledged their shares in terms of data days Bharat Electronics is taking 189 days to collect payment from its customers whereas Honeywell is taking almost 80 days. The debtors to sales ratio for Honeywell is also very high at around 24% which for which my benchmark is 30%. As of March 2020 this is not the latest data so we are comparing the March 2020 data. Bharat Electronic has to collect almost 51% of its sales of March 2020 in its balance sheet. So this is a very high value. So it had done almost 12,000 crores of sales and against that in the balance sheet 6,724 crores is still pending to be collected from its customers that is the government. And that too is also taking almost 189 days. So both ways there's a pressure but as earlier seen the company is debt free and also generating good returns and therefore not in pressure to decrease this collection days or collect it faster from the government. Honeywell's debtors to sales is 24% and it's taking around 80 days to collect payment from its customers. NPM margin for both the companies is high. Dividend yield is good for Bharat Electronics at just 2.43%. But yet whatever we can get out of the company that's good other than the gain in price this concludes my detailed analysis of bel with honeywell auto if you enjoyed watching this video do share it with your friends and subscribe thank you for watching this video have a nice day